Hey everyone, my name is Gunther and welcome back to Ottawa Zoo and our final full zoo tour. And I'm really excited to share this with you and more excited just to say how cool this image is right here. Looking down this main pathway all the way down to that fire watch tower it looks absolutely gorgeous and I think that's really awesome. Now it's Ottawa Zoo is really special to me. And part of that is because one, we have 38 episodes of us doing speed builds across the board, one full redo, which probably didn't help the length of the entire series. And we have finally completed it. And while I would have loved to have kept Ottawa Zoo going, I think we hit a point where it just wasn't possible, more so because there's just so many pieces out there. Might have gone a little happy with the foliage, which has really caused the, uh, the zoo to lag a little bit. Now, that being said, I am going to be uploading this to the workshop, so there's going to be a link in the description. Uh, so if you want to check out the zoo on your own time, by all means, download it. I would love for you to do that. Uh, maybe this helps you to build some things. Maybe it helps to give you some, uh, some inspiration. Uh, or if maybe you just want to check and see how somebody builds uh, their zoo, by all means. This is not perfect. I'm going to be the first person to say that, but I'm really happy with what we've accomplished. Now, that being said, I uh, do want to kick our tour off because uh, otherwise we're going to be here for a really long time. I can I can chat for hours about this zoo. And the best place to start, obviously, is our front entrance, uh, which we haven't really done anything. We have our front entrance right there. Uh, but we do have our keepsake corner, which is uh, just a really cool looking uh, uh, gift shop that we kind of put together. I do want to give a shout out to Clavy as well for this amazing video uh, of our plushies that you can pick up. He's provided names for every single one. I absolutely love how this worked uh, and just in general how this entire place came, kind of came together. For those who don't know, I've started streaming Planet Zoo as well, some of my builds, and this was actually built on stream. Uh, and if you ever feel the need to see or chat about Planet Zoo, by all means, pop on in on a stream or head over to our Discord. If you didn't know we had a Discord community, there's a link in the description. Uh, you're more than welcome to join. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a new uh, builder or an experienced builder, all are welcome. And it's a great way for you to share some ideas some tips and tricks, or maybe even learn uh, some new techniques. Uh, and we have uh, quite a few really cool uh, YouTubers or uh, new up and coming YouTubers, if you will, uh, in our Discord and our community. And I would love for more people to join and just to hang out with us and talk all things Planet Zoo. Now, that being said, this is a uh, pretty basic. Uh, it's uh, kind of cool. I've actually kind of uh, took inspiration from, of all places, Jurassic World Evolution 2 in one of their buildings, uh, which you may or may not see uh, prop up again somewhere else in this entire build. But I'm really happy with this. I even like how we have like this little side entrance uh, for our, uh, our staff to kind of come through, uh, which kind of gives it the idea that you have the main entrance right there. And then during uh, closing hours, you can kind of peek in and or out of the uh, side entrance. You don't have to really worry about opening the main door. Because I think we all know that uh, there's some guests that might uh, just want to, you know, go in and take advantage of any offers that they can find uh, throughout the day. Huge shout out as well uh, to our, on our stream, again, Clayby, coming in with uh, some of the really cool ideas. This little doorstop that we kind of put together, which is just a conservation board uh, sunk underneath the ground. And it kind of makes it look like the door has been propped open, which I love. I think that's uh, really cool. Now, uh, as we continue down the rest of the zoo to our actual zoo, uh, we have two habitats. We have our Beaver Creek, and then we have our mute swan, uh, the uh, the feathered scholars. So two two new habitats. Uh, this one was actually a rebuild uh, from an older habitat, and I gotta say this uh, definitely turned out to be significantly better uh, than the original habitat, which I guess makes sense as you uh, build new uh, you build new things bigger and better than ever, uh, and you you kind of uh, come up with this. Uh, how many how many beavers we have now? I think I count three, four, four beavers for sure. Uh, but I really like this habitat, more so because uh, if you look off in the distance, you can see our staff area peeking out from uh, the back area. And I think that's really cool just to kind of see a little a little tidbit, like a, almost like a backstage pass uh, for your guests, which I thought was really cool. Totally unintended, uh, but really awesome. Of course, this was my first attempt at uh, covering the, uh, the um, donation bins because we are building on franchise mode. So you have to keep that in mind that uh, donation bins are a requirement, but they look god awful ugly. There's not a whole lot you can do with them. Uh, this was my first attempt, and uh, we definitely have uh, some uh, some different versions of this throughout the zoo. Uh, but if you look, we have our shelter built into this log cabin, uh, and then of course we have like a little beaver uh, walk like pool for them to swim in. We have some firewood set up and then uh, some other food dishes. Now, is this a perfect habitat? By no means is it, but I'm still really happy with how it turned out. And at the end of the day, 
I think that's what matters the most. Are you happy with your habitat? And if you are, that's a win. If you're not, that's okay. Just go back and maybe add some extra details to it. It's amazing what you can kind of come up with. And I think our mute swan habitat is a perfect example of that. Uh, of all of my habitats, this is my favorite, uh, more so because it's just so heavily detailed. There's a lot of foliage in here, but it definitely just, it works. It kind of gets that really uh, marshy view uh, of, uh, of our mute swans. And they fit in the North American uh, zoo or the North American theme that we have because there's actually uh, two colonies of mute swans in Ontario. Uh, which I thought was really cool. And we have our backstage area, which we're going to check out really quickly, uh, or really shortly, my apologies. Uh, but again, this is probably one of my favorite habitats that I put together. And I think that uh, that's what matters. I, I really, I think this is my best habitat, I'm not going to lie. I have quite a few habitats out there. This is probably going to be one of my top 10, for sure. Now, let's go take a look at our backstage areas uh, for our, our uh, mute swan, as, long, as well as a few other habitats, um, our timber wolf and our red fox. And of course, I just want to give a huge shout out to Lion and his sign pack. I don't know what I would have done without his signs. They definitely uh, create a whole new atmosphere uh, for our zoos. Now we do have our staff only section. It's kind of sectioned off with these uh, these new panels that kind of came recently in one of the updates, I believe. Uh, and I love how they worked out because it kind of hides it. And then we have our backstage area. And again, another DLC piece. Uh, I tried to make something like this and I couldn't even figure it out. And I really like how this uh, this kind of came together. Will I try it myself? Eventually, yeah, 100%. That's how you improve. You always got to try new things. Uh, but for today and for this zoo, I think it's uh, acceptable for me to use a few of these, uh, these blueprints. Very similar to this one. We have like a little uh, refuge uh, bin. Um, so when you're kind of cleaning up and stuff like that at the end of the day. Now this is our mute swan uh, backstage area. And I gotta say, this is the first time I tried one of my new techniques, which was just kind of populate the area with a bunch of different uh, enrichment items. They don't have to be inside the habitat, they can be outside. You have some uh, enrichment items that they're gonna kind of hang out with. I've uh, sunken them into boxes because that's how we hide the, uh, the little uh, pucks that they're on top of. And uh, we have this amazing, really cool uh, backstage area. Now, uh, ignore all the flickering because this is probably one thing I'm not happy with, which is uh, I have a newfound hate for making circular uh, roofs um, for a habitat, this size anyway. I think you can make smaller ones. And in hindsight, there's probably a much better way that we could have made this. Uh, and uh, now that I think about it, uh, probably for sure is a better way. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm still happy with how it kind of turned out. We have some uh, pens for our, or some nesting pens for our swans to kind of hang out in and uh, we have not nearly enough for the amount of swans that we've, uh, we've, uh, we've uh, managed to collect over the, uh, over the, uh, the time in this zoo. <laughs> when we head into the backstage area, I'm gonna go this way because you're gonna see a little bit of, uh, of terraforming kind of uh, clip through, but we have a transformer, uh, some damage on the floor, so it kind of makes it look a little bit used. And then this is kind of like our storage room, it just has a bunch of different uh, enrichment items all ready to go with our uh, timber wolves. Because uh, sadly, our timber wolves don't actually have a real backstage area. It's just this little tunnel that leads down to their uh, their habitat. If we were to peek in there, we wouldn't really see a whole lot. It's going to probably look a little janky, I think. Uh, I tried to clean it up a little bit. Uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm going to leave that. That looked a little, uh, a little rough around the edges, so we're going to ignore that one. Now, one of my favorite backstage areas, more so because I think we've accomplished so much with this one. And again, it was built on stream. So uh, if you watched it, uh, if you missed it, sorry, uh, there is a VOD for you to watch. Uh, so when we head into the backstage area, we have this really cool, uh, what I like to think is a realistic looking backstage area, especially with the brick walls. Uh, it took a lot of time because uh, it's all different pieces that I had to kind of stagger uh, off of the actual uh, the exterior wall so we can get that two-toned uh, walls. Uh, but this is our backstage area. And again, filled it up with a bunch of fruit and enrichment items ready to go uh, and be used by our mute swan. So I think this uh, worked out really well and I'm really happy with it. And I'm not a huge fan of going into the habitats, uh, more so because we kind of see it from the direction that we don't want to look. But I wanted to take a look back here, more so because of this. And this is something I picked up from one of our challenges on the, on the Discord. Uh, somebody had this uh, worked into their habitat and I thought that was amazing. Uh, we have just like a, a water collection barrel that we can turn on and off to refill. So I thought that was really cool. Now we are going to head back out to the front and continue our journey uh, in Ottawa Zoo. 
All right, we're back to the habitat and there's definitely a lot of walking that we're gonna have to do. Uh, zoos are not for the faint of heart when it comes to uh, traversing, uh, but we're gonna swing around the corner here and we're gonna come up on our Timberwolf habitat, which is another rebuild. And I wanna say this is maybe my second rebuild that I did. And uh, in terms of rebuilding habitats, this is my favorite because I tried a lot of different techniques and a huge shout out to the community for the name Wolf Firewatch. I felt that it fit really well. So it kind of created this little uh, iconic little uh, glass uh, representation of the name. I thought that was really cool. And we have like signs saying, do not litter, do not throw food in there. Uh, and we have like these little uh, these little uh, nets that'll capture any refuse that uh, kind of gets blown off with the, uh, the bridge here. And we can see our timber wolves, they're all uh, eating and they're letting the little uh, the little pup get in there as well which you gotta always love and then we have a few older timber wolves uh our pack has grown quite a bit uh we've had to uh we've had to release a few back into the wild over time oh look we have another pup we have a few pups oh my goodness three four that's four pups that i see anyway my goodness but i really love how this uh this habit turned out as well uh, again a lot of different techniques and a huge shout out to all the youtubers who did provide different ideas because i think that's really what it is when you watch a tutorial it's not to learn how to make something but rather to learn new styles of making things because you're going to marry it all together and create your own style you're going to come up with something that you're going to like and you're going to make yourself uh, here's another example of something i tried to put together to hide our donation bins uh, there's actually a lot of donation bins here, maybe too many, but uh, I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> we have a little covered education area we worked into our Firewatch Tower, so you can kind of see a little bit more about conservation, about the timber wolf as well. And then we kind of continue on and we see the other direction. Now, our Firewatch is uh, something that's going to be uh, native or original to the park. So. Ottawa Zoo is built on a national park, so it's been repurposed and turned into a zoo. So there's a few facilities that you're gonna find around the zoo that have kind of stuck around. And uh, the Firewatch is one of them. So it's like kind of like an iconic item. And there's a few buildings or a few habitats with iconic buildings incorporated into them uh, to kind of give it that idea that maybe uh, this was an area that uh, has been around for a long time. Now we've head up to a uh, really weird crossroads. It's a little offset. Uh, the reason why it was originally we had a uh, for those who remember, we had a mountain in the center of our uh, wolf habitat. It was a really bad looking mountain, but the path came off sideways. I don't know why I did that. I thought it looked a little cool, but we come up to our food court. Now we are gonna take a quick tour of our food court, uh, and then we're gonna loop around, uh, back around and take a look at the other habitats because we have a plan in mind. Uh, there is one thing, sadly, I did not put in here, which is a map. I'm not very good at making maps, so, uh, I hope to uh, one day make a, a realistic like, map for Ottawa Zoo. Uh, maybe not Ottawa Zoo, I, I misspoke, but uh, other zoos in the future. So we have our backstage area, and we're just gonna take a really quick look back here because this leads to our skunk backstage building. And we're not gonna go in because there's nothing special about it, uh, but it leads back here. But one thing I do want to call out is how this path. I love how this path worked out. We have a bunch of leaves and stuff like that built it in. Uh, it's kind of, it was meant to give it a, like a, a more like rugged looking uh, path for our staff to walk on. It would not be comfortable if you're walking like barefoot or in sandals or something like that. Um, but I uh, like how this turned out. So our backstage area is also has a home to a rest area for all of our staff. And we can kind of come out. We have three buildings in our food court. The first one is our chief beef is using the regular stand but we also have this really cool looking like uh shake uh station so if you wanted to order like a smoothie or something like that i would envision that you'd come here and you could actually watch them make it you can see all the fruit getting ready and all the juices all ready to go um some some really cool looking design I really like how this worked out even utilizing some of the new world pieces like the fence and the vents to add a little bit of extra detail worked out and i absolutely love it there are a few issues, of course, like uh, our pathing just doesn't quite line up correctly, but that's okay. It's uh, it's part of the uh, it's part of the experience and the joy of playing Planet Zoo, I think. <laughs> we have some education signs all around, kind of talking about the the native wildlife and and all the foliage that you would find in the areas. And then, of course, we have our bathroom. We have two bathrooms set up, uh, and then if you look here, we have like a mural on the wall. Now, at the time, I really kind of wanted to make something like this. And in hindsight, there's actually a much better use of murals. And we'll see that later in the uh, in the tour with our uh, seal pavilion and how we kind of uh, put some murals in there. And I really liked it. But this still looks really cool. And it was custom man-made. I'm, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself for putting all that together. And then we have our last two stations. 
which is a uh, Monsieur Free and a uh, Gulpy. Uh, so both things are needed. And I kind of put in this uh, this little um, foliage section right here, kind of uh, break it up a little bit and add a little bit of color to the entire build. Lots of browns and dark grays and stuff like that in our zoo. So this kind of comes together. And lastly, of course, we needed some ATMs. Uh, I saw a really cool one of uh, one of Sparrow's first videos I watched was her uh, creating like an entrance zone with ticket uh, ticket booths. She used these to kind of uh, symbolize it so you can get some interaction out of it. I thought it was really cool. Uh, I would love to build something like that. I'm afraid I'm not going to be that good at it. But part of playing Planet Zoo is trying new things and experiencing them. So we're going to go back to our sign here and we're going to head towards Arctic Point. Uh, we can go to Mount Bison, but I think we're going to end the tour in that direction. So we're going to go this way instead. And we have two habitats to take a look at. And coincidentally, we've seen the backstage areas for one of them and half a back of the area for the other one. We're gonna start off with our Fox Grove. And this is another habitat that's probably in my top 10. And I say that, but there's not like that many habitats in this zoo, but I really like how this turned out. Uh, it just, it looks like a grove. It looks so natural and peaceful looking and it fits in with the rest of the foliage and stuff like that for the zoo. I thought that it worked out really well. Um, are we going to be able to see, is there a fox running around? Any foxes? One of, oh, there's one right in the back. Look at that. <laughs> Just taking a little peek, wagging their tail. Uh, I really like how this kind of turned out, some logs and stuff like that. And then of course our ditch, uh, kind of creating this natural barrier between the two. I want to focus more on creating natural barriers in, in Planet Zoo and things like that. To kind of give it that idea that you can almost reach out and touch your uh, the animals. Uh, of course, you're not supposed to, nor would we ever encourage that, but uh, would really love for them to be able to have that interaction uh, if possible. Now, on the other side, we have our skunk habitat, uh, which was based off of a movie that I watched a long time ago, uh, Fern Gully, if you remember. Uh, and I really liked that movie and I thought it was really cool with the idea that there was like a polluted tree. So that's our, our dead tree in the center and our skunks are kind of taking care of it or guarding it. Um, and we're trying to stop man from cutting down the rest of the forest and stuff like that. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. Now, funny story with this uh, particular habitat, it was one of the first times I was playing with uh, placing some um, little burrows for our skunks to use and it inadvertently because as they normally do when you place something down it causes the uh, the terraforming because uh, they didn't want to place it on a flat surface uh, and I placed it right here so that's the entrance to the burrow but what it did was it created a hole right behind it and I had a skunk fall in the hole now when playing on franchise mode so I left the game running for a little bit to kind of uh, source some cash uh, to kind of continue the expansion of Ottawa Zoo and I got so many uh, alerts being like oh you're missing a skunk or it's escaped or they're not happy and i could never figure out what it was and it took me a little while to realize that there's a hole that a skunk had fallen into and couldn't get out so i thought that was a really funny uh, little experience kind of frustrating but it's still funny very much funny at the same time now as we continue we come up to arctic point which is actually the only uh sign to a different area within the zoo i think originally when i started building auto zoo i wanted to build a zoo that would span across uh, multiple different continents and multiple different biomes and stuff like that unfortunately i think i got uh, a little too ahead of myself uh, and i uh, couldn't really get there so this is a this is the only sign to a different point that we're going to see in the entire zoo uh, and we're going to swing over here and we're going to start with our reindeer uh, again, it's another rebuild and I'm quite happy with how the rebuild turned out for the reindeer because I think we, we took a habitat that looked pretty rough with a lot of snow and some ice and some water that was all kind of backwards and stuff like that and turned it into this really much lusher looking habitat. Uh, oh, look at that. It's a little reindeer calf. I love them. Oh. Um, two reindeer calves. Oh my goodness. And there's one taking a little swim. Even better. Oh, and there's another calf taking a little swim. Look at that. We have a whole herd going on here. Uh, huge shout out, as I digress, uh, to Kate Plays, and you're going to see a little uh, link to her channel pop up here. Uh, she uh, had an amazing tip for helping me to create this when I was kind of learning how to create more uh, more lived in and more realistic habitats with like different foliage and stuff like that. Uh, and she really helped me out on this one. And I really appreciate that. We even have like our little backstage area that we'll go and take a peek in uh, later down the road. Uh, nothing too expand, nothing too fancy about it. I do like how you can kind of see some of the buildings uh, peeking out. Now this is very much heavily uh, Arctic themed. You can see with like all the wood and stuff like that. Even a little uh, Easter egg, there's a nest for birds up there. So you can kind of think like a bird would come in here and nest up there. Uh, but we have this little uh, lookout. So you can kind of sit down, warm yourselves up during the colder months. 
but you can also look out at the uh, skunk habitat and our red fox habitat. A red fox habitat. My apologies. Uh, and look at that. You can see more red foxes uh, hanging around. Ooh, there's a lot of red foxes in there, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> now we're going to continue our journey up through Arctic Point. And if you look to our left, you're going to see a path that's going to be for our staff. And this is kind of like a shortcut for our staff. It allows them to cut through this area to go in and into the two backstage areas, but it also allows them to access the other end of the park without necessarily having to walk all the way around. Because again, uh, there's a lot of walking that we're going to have to do in this, uh, this particular zoo. Now we come up here, we have our Arctic Fox uh, habitat, and I, once again, this is probably gonna be in my top 10. So we have three top 10 habitats right now. I uh, really love how this turned out, uh, more so because it's not just about the interior that worked out really well. Uh, not that I'm, I'm very happy with how it worked out, uh, but it's the, uh, the backstage area that I'm really proud of. More so because this is the first time that I really focused on trying to create a more realistic backstage area. And this is, the, uh, this is what we ended up with. Bunch of different fences uh, and, and paddocks for our uh, foxes. We have uh, some crates ready to go to transport them to other areas. Uh, you know, say for example, they need to go to a vet or something like that, some food, just about everything we want in a backstage area for our foxes. And speaking of foxes, here's uh, five of them just taking a nap on the inside, resting and relaxing. Uh, Ottawa Zoo is very much focused on conservation. So uh, we do uh, periodically release uh, a majority of our animals back into the wilderness. Uh, but we uh, also have our reindeer backstage area to look at. And this is an example of something kind of a little janky. You can kind of see that we had to use some uh, some different materials to uh, flatten out the path, but we have another uh, water uh, filtration system set up, which is always important. We need water filtrations. And then of course we have our backstage area for our, uh, our reindeer. We have a few uh, taking a nap back here. We have some feeding stations set up. And then we have this uh, weird Christmas tree thing that I put down at one point. I wasn't really sure what I was thinking about, but it leads to a chimney. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. And then that's about it from a backstage area. Again, nothing too fancy, but it exists. And uh, again, trying to work on creating something that's somewhat, somewhat uh, realistic, uh, but let's continue our journey. We'll, we'll uh, skip over to the Arctic uh, habitat now. All right, we're back at the Arctic Fox habitat. Uh, again, huge shout out to the lion for some of these amazing education signs. Uh, weird decision on the color on my part, but I think that's okay. <laughs> uh, but we continue on our journey and we're gonna start working our way uphill. Uh, now it is quite the walk for our guests. You can see that it's uh, just a continuous uphill uh, walk. And uh, for those who've been to Toronto Zoo, it's kind of like par for the course in Toronto because uh, Toronto Zoo, when I uh, the last time I went, or when I was younger anyway, they had their North American section at the bottom of this really huge hill. And you could get on the Zoomobile, which is like a zoo that would, uh, it's a tour that would go around that has periodic stops that you can jump in and off, on and off at any time. Uh, but they would never go up or down the hill because it was too steep. So it's always a workout. It's fun going down. It's a, it's a work coming back up. But we have our Arctic wolf habitat. And take a look from this direction because I think you can see a lot of the habitat. Again, I really love how this turned out. It's probably one of my favorite mountain ranges I've ever made just because it's so large. But we have our three waterfalls leading into a pool, pool of water right over there. Uh, and then it's all set up to go. Now we are going to continue our journey before we circle back and take a look at the Arctic uh, wolves and uh, take a look uh, at our wolverines. Now, before we head there, so just telling you about this uh, Ottawa or Toronto Zoo and how they set up. So what I've done is I've created this little path right here, which leads off to uh, a little food station. So if maybe if you're thirsty, you need to use the restroom or something like that, you can come over here and uh, and get some, uh, get some good food, good drinks, and that's what matters. And you can sit down and uh, take a bite or take a break and uh, enjoy the view. Now you can't see a whole lot, but if you look really closely, you can see our fire watch and you can see the mountains in the distance. So I've set up these binoculars for our guests to kind of take a little peek at everything. And if we rotate a little over here, you can see a little bit of our beaver habitat and our uh, staff area. Really cool and I love the sight lines uh, from this direction. Now we are going to continue all the way up to our wolverine habitat. What well, does lead to a dead end, but it is going to be the highest point in our zoo. Uh, so the food does work as a way to get franchise uh, guests to come all the way up here. It works a little bit, not perfectly, but I think that's the uh, the point, which is really just to get our guests to come all the way up. 
Now, as we're kind of walking up, I was, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Adam Up, watching one of his videos on how to kind of like uh, blend in the uh, the, uh, the paths with all the grass and the ground and stuff like that. And it was really used the moss tackle. Uh, probably did not help from my uh, my foliage, my piece count, placing all these uh, decals. I think there's over, I want to say a thousand, uh, almost a thousand of these spaced everywhere uh, to kind of give it that little look. Uh, in hindsight, probably should have done something different. But we are at our wolverine habitat and we have some baby wolverines. Oh, so cute. An adult wolverine, and then we have our climbing structure. It's not the perfect climbing structure, uh, but it works uh, in a weird way because uh, they have some uh, pretty crazy jumps that they uh, they go on when they uh, jump from one platform to the other. Now, our first floor does lead to a, uh, a backstage area. It won't allow me to go in though because I have pathing one on top of the other. Uh, so instead, we're going to work our way up and take a look at the top area. Now, there's also a water filtration system on the inside here, which is really just services the uh, the timber wolf habitat. And it kind of makes sense to have it at the very top where this waterfall is. And you can kind of see right here, the waterfalls uh, peeking out from the corner. Uh, and I would like to think it's a very man-made waterfall because uh, that makes the most sense. But this is the highest point in our zoo. And I think you can tell it from here. You can see all the amazing views uh, in the mountains and stuff like that. And when you look at the timber wolf habitat or the Arctic wolf habitat, you'll see it here. There's also another viewing point for our wolverines. You can kind of see them all running around. Oh, he just uh, darted into the brush. He's uh, trying to hide from us. <laughs> A few of them are taking some of uh, some drinks. I ended up having to place this here because for some reason, my staff would not go to a regular water station and refill it. So uh, this is my way of fixing that. <laughs> now we are gonna make our way all the way back down to our uh, Arctic wolf habitat. So this, uh, this is the only dead end in the entire uh, the entire zoo, which I guess makes sense. We do need a dead end. But again, here's another amazing view of Ottawa Zoo. All right, with that being said, let's make our way back down. All right, that was quite the hike, but we've made it all the way back to our Arctic wolf habitat, and we're gonna make our way. Uh, all the way through. Now this is a, uh, a dual road. So on one side, we can have our Arctic wolves. On the other side, you can peek into the Arctic foxes. Not very well, mind you, but you can. And then this is our habitat. Now I really like this habitat because I was trying to make something that was a little unique for me anyway. Again, it was another remake. Uh, the majority of these habitats are actually remakes, but uh, I'm not, I, I'm happy with this. It's very long, but thin. It works really well with the Arctic wolves, but I'm not as happy as I am uh, with this backstage area. I love how this building turned out and we're gonna take a quick look on the inside of the building. But before we do so, welcome to another viewing point for our Arctic wolves. Oh, look, there's a perfect timing. One just running around, all two of them. Oh, I wonder if I, I've never actually seen them go in the water, but I think they, they do drink it. They're, they're okay from that perspective. <laughs> now we have two entrances, two doors here. The first one goes to our dome, uh, our domes that our guests can use. And the second one leads to our backstage area. And this is really what we want to take a look at. Our first door is going to lead to a kind of like a prep area. We have our sink set up uh, as well as I, I, I like to call them uh, foliage tables. So this is where we would kind of go to plant some new trees or maybe want to swap out some foliage. Uh, tons of storage for our zoo. And then that's really about it. Now, when we roll around and take a look through the other door, though, this leads into our uh, rest area, our backstage uh, our kennel, if you will. And you can kind of see there's one wolf taking a little break, uh, enjoying the uh, the break from the heat, because uh, it is a little warm in Ottawa Zoo today, and uh, they are not used to the heat uh, person. We have two crates to help transport them to uh, other zoos. Uh, will it fit through a door? Probably not, but that's not something we're gonna really think about. <laughs> I did set up a table right here, and this table is really more or less just to, uh, it acts as a way to fill in the gap here, because there was a weird, a weird gap and I didn't really to put there. So I put a table instead and it worked out. Uh, we do have our keeper hut. I put a door here because the uh, the building materials kind of all messed up a little bit. So this helped to hide the building materials. And that is our backstage area. You're also going to notice a lot of these in a lot of backstage areas. And really, they're just uh, cubbies or, or lockers for our staff to use when they come in. Uh, we would for sure want to lock away anything that maybe our wolves or any other animal could get a hold of. And we want to keep uh, we want to keep away from them. Now, as we kind of continue down, we can see the other path for 
our reindeer back to the area. So this gives our uh, guests or our staff sorry, a way to kind of cut through. Now, in order to prevent staff or guests from using uh, going in here, what I've done, and a huge shout out to Lizzie for the idea, uh, was uh, I've just created a one uh, one meter up, one meter down uh, path bridge here for staffing. And then I put a little fence over it. So this prevents uh, guests from going down there, but it allows the staff to use it and, uh, and work through. And that looks a lot more natural than just putting a staff hat. Now, this was our last build, uh, which is Thor's Table. And uh, it's our restaurant. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. Uh, again, whole new roof, because uh, that roof changed a lot. Uh, but this was built on stream, and uh, the stream had some different direction, a lot of help in creating this. The interior is really where we see a lot of the changes, though. So when you kind of come in here, uh, our goal was to marry a lot of the Arctic architecture with uh, New World architecture. And I think I did a really good job of this, uh, where you can kind of see our fence and like our little uh, um, partitions from the uh, main main dining area and like our, our bar. So every every restaurant has a bar where they can make all their drinks and stuff like that. So no different here. And then of course, I really like how this worked out, which is that Christmas tree. And I just rotated it 90, 180 degrees, sorry, uh, on its end and then place them next to each other. So you can kind of get this really cool looking uh, design with all the wood. And I thought it looked really awesome. Really happy with how this uh, kind of uh, came together. We do have an indoor and outdoor section. So if you choose to eat indoors or outdoors, you can, but it is a fully covered outdoor section. So we don't really have to worry about our guests uh, getting rained on or snowed on or anything like that. Now, one thing just to call out, uh, I did try to emulate the same design from this, uh, from the actual um, facility to the rest of the zoo or the rest of the building, sorry. It was a perfect by no means, uh, but I think I did a pretty good job and I'm really happy with it. Cause again, it's, it's testing my skills and pushing them a little bit further. Uh, the one thing I will say is uh, clearly they have the ability to add pots to the game, uh, but they choose not to, uh, or even like little like uh, fridges or um, grills and whatnot, because the, 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 the assets are there. Uh, I would love to have those assets in the actual game. So we can kind of create more realistic backstage areas and stuff like that with pots. And I love the idea of having a garbage can stuck underneath a table. So when you're prepping food, you can just push in the guard, like, you know, all the stuff that you don't really necessarily need and put them in there. So uh, it's just a, a small tidbit that I would uh, I would love to see added in. Now, as we work around, we have our back uh, back area of our doll sheep habitat. I did kind of close this off with a bunch of wood so that our guests can't sneak in here or, to, or get a peek, because uh, this is not the direction that we want them to look. But we do have a one backstage area. I really like how this building kind of came together. It's, uh, it's kind of cool seeing that you don't necessarily need a large building to create something that's looked really awesome. When we walk through here, you can see it. We just have some storage. We have uh, a door, which gives us access to our snow machine. So if we need to do maintenance on our snow machine, we can. And then just some additional uh, lockers and then a keeper's hut. Now I've tried to focus on creating one, one keeper hut for every habitat. And I think that's really important. We don't want to necessarily have cross contamination. There would be dedicated resources in each keeper area. Uh, for each animal, so we would always have separate uh, separate uh, buildings like that. Now we are going to fast forward down this little path right here. This is a little bit of a longer path, uh, but this is uh, this is what I meant by like uh, this is an area that uh, the zoo uh, just inherited. So this is from the original park where we made all of this stuff. We kept this for I like to think we kept it for our staff. So let's just uh, run all the way down here really quickly. Now, as we kind of come around the corner, you can see this really cool looking lake. Uh, and this was the last thing I built in Ottawa Zoo and I kind of rushed on it a little bit. And the reason why there's, there's so much foliage and trees and stuff like that, really starting to slow down the game. Uh, but I've created this uh, little uh, beachfront area for our staff so they can come and relax, kind of give it like a little bit of added um, uh, benefit for working at Ottawa Zoo. Now, for those who joined the stream, I want you to know there is a Nessie in the, in the pond or in the lake. Uh, so I've uh, kept my word, Nessie has made their way into Auto Zoo's lake. And then of course we have like a little hut. So uh, I would like to envision that staff or the, the zoo now uses this for storage. Uh, there's nothing on the inside, but I would like to think they use this for storage at this point. We have a little campground. So like uh, on your breaks and stuff like that, you can come on, kind of come over here, sit down, maybe roast some marshmallows if you wanted. And just look at some of these statues which are our core animals that we've added to the zoo. Uh, couldn't add all of them, because for some reason in franchise mode, I don't have all the reward statues. 
but that's okay. I've uh, added what I could. <laughs> so just envision there's a lot more animals here representing each of the individual habitats in Ottawa Zoo. So this is the last area uh, and you can really feel the FPS sometimes drop when you're looking in this direction uh, versus looking in this direction. That's a lot better. You can actually see it kind of hitch up a little bit there. But we are going to head all the way back to the main uh, pathway for the rest of the duo. All right, we're back on our main pathway and we are going to continue our journey. Ignore the weird terraforming. Uh, I've made it work, but it's uh, it's definitely not great or flat in all directions. But we have our doll sheep habitat. And uh, again, I think another one of my top 10 habitats only because of all the rock work, uh, creating a more natural looking uh, rock surface for our doll sheep to kind of uh, traverse. And uh, oh, he's, uh, he's bawing at us. <laughs> Excuse you. Uh, but this is our habitat. I'm really happy with how it kind of turned out. We have like this main foliage island right in the center, uh, some eating, uh, some foliage boxes and whatnot. And then, uh, uh, yeah, they have their uh, their little uh, shelter all the way at the very top. And then we have our snow machine, which helps to provide snow in the colder months, which are always important for girl sheep. Now I like to envision that this area just has a lot of like random foliage islands. You see like there's quite a few, which is a great way to kind of break up all the pathing. So instead of having one large plaza here, it's individual small paths that kind of interconnect. And this leads to our cougar habitat, which you can kind of see two uh, one cougar. We have two. Uh, I'm not always able to see the second one for some reason. I don't know where they went. I really hope they're not stuck somewhere, but they, we have two cougars in this habitat. And another shout out to Lizzie for this amazing idea of utilizing some uh, some star, uh, wood planks or wood beams to kind of create steps for our staff to traverse all the way to the top. And then you can actually go all the way up to this little cabin that you can go up here. It's more for like an iconic cabin. So maybe it was like a cabin on the hill that was originally here. It could be like a logger's cabin or a foreman's cabin, anything like that. Uh, so it's uh, it's kind of remained because we want to pay homage to the original intent behind this uh, this entire area. Uh, but I, I really like this. The only downside, of course, is the chain link fence. This is the only time I use, uh, no, that's a that's a lie. This is one of the only times, I use it a few other times, that we have these chain link fences that kind of uh, block our view. So it is a little rough, but I'm still pretty happy with how this turned out. I think originally we had intended to have it like fully in, in, encapsulate the entire uh, habitat, but it looked a little too weird. So I'm happy with how we ended it here. And there's a, a few different uh, levels, but it goes all the way around the entire habitat, uh, keeping them penned in here. And uh, it leads to our uh, little staff area and uh, rest area for our guests. So it's kind of uh, broken into two. So we have our staff and rest room or break room. And then we have a restaurant and we also have some vending machines kind of hidden into the walls around the corner. And I've always struggled with like how you put vending machines in this game, but I like how this worked out for me anyway, which is just kind of sinking them into the wall and building it up around. So if we needed to move them out, we can actually pull it out. But in the meantime, uh, we just uh, slide them in there and they're all nice and snug and we don't have to worry about people maybe damaging it or anything like that. Now we do have our seal pavilion as well. Uh, so we can see if our sign leads to a restroom, we have our seal pavilion. Uh, we have Cougar Canyon and Doll Sheep Valley, which we've already visited. And then we have Moose Lodge, which we're going to take a look at shortly. But before we get there, we're going to take a look at our Seal Pavilion and my favorite uh, indoor habitat. It's actually one of our only indoor habitats, full indoor habitats, which is uh, saying something. because uh, It was a really big endeavor on my part to kind of put this together. Uh, but we have our backstage area. Nothing really too fancy with this place. It's pretty empty, but we do have this area. And I'm not gonna go in because every time I go in, it always messes it up. Oh, we have a baby seal. Oh, look at him go. He's waddling away. Oh, that's so cute. Poor guy. Uh, I like our backstage area more so because of the colors. I feel it fits the entire theme of the uh, seal pavilion so well. Uh, but let's go take a look at the rest of our uh, pavilion. Uh, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's a very large building, some uh, really cool different designs. Again, this is uh, inspiration from Jurassic World Evolution uh, 2, I think, with this like weird like hook design going on. Then we have our main entrance right here. Uh, huge shout out as well to uh, Frontier for adding in these doors. Uh, I don't say this enough, but I love these doors. <laughs> They look so well and they work really well, but we have our seal uh, pavilion. You can kind of come in and we have this mural walls. This is what I'm talking about. Like there's a, a, a separate one, which is like a river mural. I really like that one as well. 
We have uh, these bubbles on the ground trying to like just like simulate like being underwater. Uh, we can see all the fish and the seals kind of uh, going around. And then we have uh, some conservation signs with seals on them. Uh, conservation, awareness, learning, enrichment, and another conservation sign. And just a bunch of seals. I especially like this one though. Just taking a little peek, saying like, hello. <laughs> in that same voice, hello. But this is our seal habitat. So you can kind of see it from two directions, one up top, one on the bottom. The bottom gives you the underwater view, so you can see them kind of swimming around. Uh, I love how they uh, how they interact here. Looks really cool. And uh, I tried to do my best to sink in this speaker into this education uh, zone. And it kind of just masks the speaker, but it lets it kind of sit out there. Uh, I've tried to be realistic as much as possible to my level of uh, ability. Uh, there is two areas though, if you were to ever download this, you'll notice that there's two, uh, there's two ticket gates uh, sunken underground. It's because I was struggling in getting the, uh, the power to go to certain areas and that was the only way I could kind of get it to work. Um, so you'll notice that and you gotta forgive me for that one. Uh, it's a little, I cheated a little bit. But this is the upstairs area of our habitat with uh, two different areas for them to jump on, a nice little beach for them to lay on. And uh, really funny, it was I built this on stream and uh, Lizzie provided some feedback, so I really appreciate that. She uh, mentioned that she didn't think it was gonna be large enough and she was 100% right, it was not large enough. I had to tack on a whole other section to get the, uh, the seals to actually uh, uh, be happy with this type of habitat. But it worked out really well. And then of course we have our uh, info booth, which kind of acts as a way for like people to come up here and ask questions about the pavilion or maybe if they wanted to donate or something like that, that'd be the Thank place to do it. Now, when we come out, we have our raccoon habitat, which we're gonna take a look at in a little bit, but this leads back to our food court. And I just wanna call out these signs, these banners that we put there, or I put together rather. I'm really happy with how it worked out. Uh, it was a kind of, it's actually three different screens placed on top of each other. And then I had to take the image and then cut it into three so that we could get it to fit correctly. Uh, so maybe not the best way to doing it, but I really like how it turned out. We have these banners kind of uh, flown around in all of the, uh, in the zoo. Now we're gonna continue on to Moose Lodge. So Moose Lodge, we're gonna do this a little weirdly, uh, but this is a, a habitat enclosure, or this is a habitat building that I created. And initially I wasn't very happy with the interior. And I think I mentioned this in the, uh, the speed build for it. I just wasn't very happy. But then when I went back and rebuilt it, I built something significantly better and I couldn't have uh, been happier with the end, uh, the end result. So we have two more of those banners, explore and discover. Uh, and then we have some different areas for us to take a look at. We have kind of like a what they eat section so you can kind of see the food that they eat for the moose. We also have these like little uh, exhibit animals. It's the only place we have exhibits in this, uh, in this zoo. We have our tree frog, we have our uh, turtle, and we have a bullfrog. Uh, and we have all these uh, little um, headphone set up. So a huge shout out to Sparrow for putting that together. Uh, she used it in her zoo. Thank you for letting me use it in my zoo. I really appreciate that. But you have this really cool uh, section where you can kind of put on headphones and hear more facts and details about bullfrogs. Uh, small random story, I used to catch bullfrogs as a kid. I remember catching them. They are huge. Bullfrogs are the largest frogs that I've ever held in my hand before. And they are strong. <laughs> for a kid anyway, they were strong for me as a kid. But we have the other side, which is our moose uh, enclosure. And again, we have some speakers for everybody to kind of listen in. And we uh, have a perfect view of a moose right here. Man, they are tall. Moose are the scariest animal. Uh, ever because they look super docile, but they're not. They can be extremely territorial. And there's actually a video running around. I think it's from BC or British Columbia, where uh, there is a, a moose chasing a bear, a grizzly bear. And that's not something you normally see, uh, or you would think you normally see with a moose just chasing down a grizzly bear. But that grizzly bear was was not having it. He was out. Oh, look at the two calves hanging out. Uh, assuming they're hanging out with their mother because uh, she has no antlers, so that would make sense. And their father. So it's, it's like a whole family unit. Oh, perfect. It's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> now, I will say this about the habitat. Uh, when you kind of kind of come around the corner, you're going to notice that our, uh, our barrier is a little low. And you're right. Uh, maybe a little too low because uh, uh, I've seen the moose get pretty close. They can't escape because of the water. Uh, but they've been awfully close to this barrier. And I can only imagine the amount of people that would kind of reach in and try to touch the moose, which you should never do. If you ever see a moose in the wilderness, never touch them, never try to pet them. Oh my goodness, I don't think I've ever seen them run. Oh, <laughs> he took that ball right out. I could not have planned that any better. 
but we have this really cool looking habitat, and this is one of our newer habitats. I've never added this in the meadow running. I don't think I've ever seen them run around that much. Weird. Uh, that was one of our newer habitats, um, leading into, uh, it's kind of bridged onto one of our older habitats, and it utilizes some of the space from the original bear habitats. So we reworked the bear habitat and split it into two, essentially, creating a moose and a grizzly bear habitat. Now we also have our raccoon habitat, so something just really quickly put together. Uh, oh, there, baby raccoon. <laughs> baby, oh, there's the, uh, the parent, they're all running for the food. We have quite a few uh, habitats going on there. This is, uh, this is, I love this. Now this is uh, one of our, uh, one of my uh, first tutorials that I ever did, which was kind of like a way to kind of show how to create some small animal climbing structures. I really love how this turned out. Uh, some multiple structures. The only downside for me is every time I load this zoo, I usually have to go in and modify this to get them to actually be happy with it. Because uh, for some reason, it doesn't register that it's climbable. And then I just, I lower it and raise it a little bit and then it works. So it's kind of weird. Uh, I do like the little fence in the background that we have kind of worked into the wall as well, with them, all the raccoons peeking up and over, uh, ready to take advantage of whatever they can find. <laughs> Uh, we are going to take a look in our backstage area, and there's nothing too fancy with one. So our moose habitat has a fairly generic looking backstage area. Now, I like to think the glass is all double pane glass. Uh, and the reason why is because you would not want a moose to scrape in and smash the glass with their antlers. Uh, I feel like that's something that could definitely happen. Uh, when we take a look back here, you kind of see a lot of windows you can view into the uh, view into the barn. So you can kind of keep an eye on all the, uh, the moose and then some really cool like little uh, gates that you can kind of slide shut if need be on all the sides. And then they have like feeding blocks that are leaning over. So if they were all in their paddock, you could actually take the, uh, the feeding block, fill it up and then place it in for them to take advantage of. Again, utilizing the idea that you can kind of just place a bunch of uh, habitat items all the way around in the exterior or in the interior of your backstage area to kind of give it a little bit more of a fleshed in look. It works out really well. Now, speaking of other backstage areas, we have our grizzly bear habitat. I'm gonna fly right in here. We have some uh, some enrichment items all ready to go. Lots of drainage on the ground because we'd have to clean this area quite a bit. And then we have uh, our backstage area. Lots of damage on the walls, just from the bears kind of moving around and stuff like that. We even have a way station ready to go. So if you need to the way them to make sure that maybe they're eating enough food, all of that stuff, uh, that's always important. And then uh, just some storage and, uh, and other buildings. We have a... Uh, a restroom, or a, not a restroom, a staff room, and a uh, keeper's hut. So again, just like a really cool looking little backstage area, uh, getting more detailed with our roofs, uh, giving giving a little bit more of a lived in realistic uh, drop ceiling look. It's all cement, so you're not gonna really kind of have stuff embedded in the cement. It's not a smart idea to do that. So everything's always been exposed and put in all these uh, cables and whatnot. Now, as we kind of continue back out, we can see the actual habitat from our guest point of view. And we also have the Urso Learning Center, which is a really cool learning center for our guests to utilize. So they can kind of come in and learn more about uh, grizzly bears and, and uh, what makes them uh, so unique and so awesome. Speaking of grizzly bears, we have two. I'm pretty sure we should have three grizzly bears. Um, can't find it. I thought we had a squirrel for a second running around, but I realized there are no squirrels in this game. It was just a, it was a feeding tube running around there. But uh, I don't see the other bear. There was three though, for sure. <laughs> I hope there. I hope it hasn't escaped in some way. My number one fear: having a grizzly bear on the loose in a zoo. Uh, but we have, like I mentioned, our Urso Learning Center, which is just uh, kind of like a really cool looking tower with. Uh, some interior stuff and uh, went really hard on the uh, the education stuff on this section. So you can kind of see uh, like health and safety, some facts, uh, more about the bear, migration patterns, but also like uh, how do you measure up? So you can kind of see how tall you are compared to a bear. And I think that's really cool. Uh, we have uh, a little speaking point for our educators. And then we have this little homage to like bears and popular color uh, culture. So I want to think like Brother Bear or uh, those types of movies and stuff like that. I thought it was a really cool call out and uh, I really like how this, uh, this education center worked out. I think I can only still see two bears. I don't know what happened to the third one. I am positive there is a third bear, but maybe I'm crazy. Probably crazy at this point. 
Now our last habitat to take a look at is actually one of our earlier rebuilds, which is going to be for our Mount Bison. So Mount Bison was pretty rough around the edges. So we went back through and we built it all and we have quite a few bison hanging out. Again, another example of a habitat barrier, which is maybe just not tall enough. Uh, these bison can get awfully close and you can get awfully close to them. That's probably not a good mixture. But we have a few iconic features in this habitat. Right off the bat, we have our mountain in the background, but we have this like gold mine set up that got flooded. And then as is normal, when you have a flooded gold mine, gold uh, might have escaped the mountain. And we have a little uh, prospector cabin, or uh, not a cabin, but a prospector site set up so they can kind of come in and pan the water and look for all the gold that they can find and stuff like that. Uh, again, a really cool habitat, one of our earlier rebuilds, but it, it definitely works out. We even have this really cool looking barn way off in the distance uh, for us to go and explore. Now, as we kind of continue around, you can see uh, some bridges. We had to put this bridge here as well as in our timber wolf habitat because uh, our staff could not traverse the water. Uh, one, I think it's because the water was too deep, but also they don't like to traverse these stones. So be careful about how many stones you place around because uh, they may not be very happy with them. <laughs> Uh, this is an example, a prime example of an area that I had to go through and, and leave a uh, um, a ticket, like a ticket entrance uh, under the ground because I could not figure out how to fit in some uh, educate or some power to power everything. I, I had it kind of like stuck in the forest here, but it looked a little weird, so I got rid of that and uh, went with uh, went with that under the uh, under the ground hidden technique. Now we do have this little hut, which is nothing fancy. All it is is just a uh, it's a vending machine hut. So you can kind of store some vending machines and uh, this helps to hide how terrible looking the vending machines are on their own. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a home uh, for it to kind of hang out in. Now we do have our backstage area. We're gonna take a quick look at our uh, our area for our bison. And uh, every time I say bison, I think of by son, uh, which is a terrible dad joke. I'm not even a dad and I keep on wanting to say it. So I do apologize. Uh, but we have our backstage area for the bison. And if you uh, come back through here, you can see uh, went pretty uh, pretty heavy on this one too, specifically the roof. Uh, I think the roof is what I'm most happy about, creating this full on uh, latest work for like the uh, the drop ceiling. Uh, we have some uh, education or uh, some enrichment items, specifically foods. So you can see like a bunch of hay ready to go. We have a rather large herd of, uh, of bison. So it makes sense that we have a lot of these. Now the, you're going to notice that there's obviously like a door right here, like there's no path right here. Uh, there used to be a fence that would prevent the bison from kind of going all the way over here and just eating the food that's all stockpiled. Uh, but because the, the entrance to the zoo is right here, uh, what would happen is they would unpack them right here and then they'd get stuck so they couldn't go any further. So I had to delete it. Now in hindsight, what I probably could have done is I actually could have put like one of those like half doors right here. Um, and then called it a day and just left like a normal door right here. But that's hindsight. That's what they call it 2020. Now, the last thing to take a look at, and probably one of my favorite features is our uh, our staff area. And I say it's my favorite feature because I don't think I would have ever been able to build this without the help from the community. But this is probably my favorite thing that I've ever built, which is a two story staff facility it has every building that we would need have our vet clinic, our research, our quarantine, uh, keeper huts, uh, trade center, workshop, staff area, rest area, just about everything you need uh, to run your zoo. And uh, it just, it worked out really well. Weirdly enough, I don't like how that worked out. In hindsight, probably should have put something else there. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. I think it's just, it's part of the learning experience and, and growing and developing and stuff like that. Uh, but I really like how this entire area turned out. Lots of natural foliage. I love the sky bridge as well, which we'll try to climb, we'll try to cross and end up there. And then we have this building, which has uh, some power and uh, water filtration systems. I'm not going to go inside because it's not actually completed on the inside; it's just a shell. But I'd like to think that this is another area where our zoo just reincorporated a pre-existing building, in this case the bunker, to use it for something else instead of just tearing it down and replacing it. So that's why we have a bunker uh, mixed in with our staff facilities. Now, the really cool thing with the staff facility as well is when we kind of come up onto the second floor, uh, you'll see that there's a lot of uh, staff care up here. So it's places where they can kind of come and sit down. They can maybe plant some. So you can kind of see like a garden's all set up, ready to plant, stuff like that. But on top of that, you just have uh, some additional seating areas and, uh, and more rooms for people to kind of go into, uh, different staff rooms and meeting rooms and stuff like that. And we have our sky bridge as well, which leads to this amazing view right here which I kind of like. I love this view. 
And that's it. We've done a full tour of our Ottawa Zoo. Surprisingly short, considering we spent 38 episodes, uh, which at like three hours minimum to build for each one. We're looking at over like 120 hours of build time on this. Uh, and all condensed down to a less than hour zoo tour. But I got to say again, would not have been able to build this without your help. Um, so thank you so much for all of the feedback uh, that everybody provided, the tips and advice. I do remember Clavy from the original, one of my original first videos for the staff area. Uh, Clavy provided some tips on like how to get rid of the flickering on certain building pieces. Never knew I could do that. And I think it goes to show how, how much there is to learn in this game and what you can learn from every individual person. So I just want to say thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Uh, but this is not the end of Planet Zoo for us. Uh, we've already started work on our new zoo. Uh, our new zoo. Uh, so that's coming up soon. Our entrance is uh, quickly coming together and it's all set to go. Uh, we actually have some live stream uh, VODs available. So if you didn't catch the live stream, you can actually watch it come together. So in much more detail. Uh, but of course, uh, there's going to be a speed build for that coming soon uh, with a new zoo uh, focused in South America, which I'm really excited for. Otherwise, I just want to again say thank you so much for your support. And if you're thinking about joining our Discord, by all means, come on, pop on over. Uh, feel free to participate, everything like that. We're here to have fun. Otherwise, I just want to say, as always, ciao for now, everybody. Mm -hmm.